Hey everyone, welcome to Rick's 135th Scale Models. My name is Rick. Today I'm going to be finalizing the building and painting of the Border 135th Scale Leopard 2A7V. Now, in the last video, I built the model and in the process I did some modifications which I talked about. Those would be uh, resin parts I designed that you can purchase. Uh, I'll talk about those at the end of this video. Uh, but I now want it to go into the painting process. My plan is to paint it, to do the pattern that the Bundeswehr has on it for camo in the tricolor NATO green, brown, and black, and then go through a light weathering and add some dirt and dust to it, uh, and then finalize it with some camo netting. Now, I'm not looking to really cover up the quality of the model or any, you know, diminishing the details but I do want to make it look a little more realistic something that's been driven around a little bit it's being utilized but uh, it's still in a really good clean pristine look so let's get started on the video and show you what I've done okay so I've already pre-primed it in Mr. Hobby brown mahogany uh, that's a good uh, base for the shades of the NATO green so initially I start painting the road wheels. What I've done is I put them in a little spindle here to make it simple to turn and I'm using Mr. Finish Surfacer uh, 1500 Black. I find that to be a good color for the uh, rubber on the road wheels. I uh, paint all the bottoms and then get it ready for the next stage. I got this little jig uh, several years ago and it works perfect for the road wheels. What they do is you stick them in the little holes and get it all prepped and then flip it over and then you can start your painting process that way. Now the idea here is you paint uh, four different directions and that gets it inside it. Once you paint one side, you flip it over, put it in and paint the other side. Depending on the dry time of your paint, uh, you, you know get an idea of how fast you can work. I've gotten pretty good at this as far as not getting uh, paint smears, so I've pushed the timeline here, but it definitely works out a lot better and makes this a lot faster process. After painting the road wheels, I painted the uh, main tank body of itself. Now, I've already done that here. It's just a basic coat, uh, and then I start the camo pattern. Now, the green is painted with Mr. Hobby, Bronze Grun, which is a NATO green variant that's very accurate to the Bundeswehr. Um, and then uh, now I'm using the brown, which is the NATO brown, and also Mr. Hobby painting the pattern of the camo. Now, one of the things I've said in past videos, the Bundeswehr is very specific on their paint pattern. Um, every tank looks the same uh, after it leaves the factory. Now if they do maintenance there may be some variations due to the uh, maintenance department's painting but if it if it's fresh from the factory it will have a very specific pattern and that pattern is going to match or match every single other tank in that class or vehicle or whatever it is such as the Leopard 2A6 won't look exactly like a 2A7 but uh, there will be similarities but all the 2A7s will all look the same and all the 2A6s will look the same. Now, one of the things I've noticed even on newer paint jobs is a lot of times you'll have a real heavy perimeter where they've painted the perimeter part and then the interior often will be a little bit more faded out as the paint might be thinner. So what's nice about using this technique here is a lot of times you unknowingly simulate that look. So it's definitely uh, another advantage to using the airbrush and taking your time to really get your the fine line for your perimeter and then fill it in. After finishing the brown I started the black. Um, that's another challenging paint. Uh, the reason why is the way it covers it, you've got to really watch your lines. It, it does have a more of a habit of building up and creating kind of a bad spot. Um, the other thing is as you'll see this is a very 
heavy paint they do on the German vehicles. Uh, they'll have obviously the NATO green and then from there you'll have a little bit of brown but quite a bit of black and generally you, if you look at enough of them you'll start noticing there's a lot of commonality to the pattern uh, to break up the silhouette of the vehicle in different environments. So the one thing they don't do is they don't paint the road wheels uh, it's just the main body of the vehicle that has these patterns. So and I like to do the brown first and then follow it up with the black, making sure that the black has the perfect pattern and over sprays any of the uh, brown areas that are underneath it. But once again, this is that process of slowly breaking down each part of the vehicle and painting the pattern, filling it in and touching it up. And now after I completed the camel pattern, one of the things I did notice was there were some errors on the uh, manufacturer of the model's description of the paint pattern. So I went to my Tankercrad book and uh, kind of looked at the pictures there and then went back and did some touching up, which I'm doing here. The biggest thing I noticed was there's a brown area on the top of the turret in front of the loader, and that was real narrow on the diagram of the model, but in reality it's a lot wider on the actual vehicle. The other part is the way they had the black and green in front of the commander. His protective glass is actually NATO green, not black as the model showed it. So I went back and corrected all those parts and then went on to the next stage. After completing all of the corrections and on the paint, from there I put a uh, gloss clear coat on in acrylic and then got ready to start putting the decals on. Now in the process of installing the decals, I did have one issue which I think is a uh, just a bad batch on the product I got. Uh, the decals were very, very, very thin and uh, I almost immediately started falling apart. Um, having experienced this with this first decal, what I ended up doing is just taking the decal on the paper and sliding it on and then not doing any moving it around much. Uh, like I said, I think this was just an isolated incident. Uh, I didn't have any other issues with any of the other decals, uh, but that first one, which wasn't a big deal. I did have extra of it, so I was able to correct that without any major flaws in the model process. I will say, though, that once the decals were installed on the model, they did lay very smooth, so it was a really nice finish on that part. I was very happy with the finished results. One of the things you can also, when you look here, notice is the uh, kind of the faded look on the black paint on the top of the lower hall there. Uh, that's kind of an effect I wanted to get, which I was talking about. As you paint, you can kind of create that effect. You'll get a natural dulling of paint from sun and things like that. So the model has you putting the iron cross on the outside basket. Now on the real tank that's on a steel plate, on the model it's on the PE sheet, but there's no uh, plate part, it's just got holes. So I figured I'd just try it. Um, it actually worked out nicely, although the color was a little off, but I just went back and painted over the green and uh, the end results were great. The only thing that I regret is I should have not put the baskets on first because there's a decal underneath the basket and it's almost impossible with these decals due to being so thin to install them. So I just used some other decals I had to create that effect. Once the decals were all done, I did a dull coat of paint and the clear acrylic and then I started the rest of the detail painting. Um, here I'm painting the tow cables and just using a sky gray. Uh, it actually works out nicely, uh, I found. Also painting all the uh, reflectors, taillights, headlights, the uh, um, convoy placards. You can see the white cross next to the license plate. Uh, all the little details on the actual model. 
I did not paint the reflectors on the sides of the vehicle as I was doing something that was kind of more in the field. So I figured a lot of times they take those off uh, before they go out and train. So I did not install those or paint the colors on that. After that, I got ready to start painting the tracks. Uh, I hadn't installed them yet because I wanted all the painting done. Um, I did my primer coat and then did my different layers here. I'm just doing a weathering of it. And then I'm going to take a sponge and tap all the black parts for the tread part. After I got them done, I installed them and then started using the chalk to detail the uh, model with more of the dusted look. Uh, here I'm installing it in each road wheel and then you'll see later on I'm going to come back with a uh, q-tip and kind of clean the centers out to give it that look of as it turns the dust kind of flies and finds its grounding point. I also then did a light dusting on the lower part of the vehicle uh, to create that one of the things I didn't video here, but you can kind of see the white streaks. That's I used oil to uh, do the weathering, just a little bit of light uh, water streaks and uh, the natural oxidation streaks you see, which you can kind of see here on the sides. So one of the things I've always talked about is when it comes to adding the dust and weathering, less is best. Uh, you really don't want to overdo this. Although this looks heavy when you initially put it on, I will follow it up by kind of rubbing some of it off and, and making it blend in. Once you seal it with your acrylic flat coat, it does take a lot of that away, um, so it won't look as dark, but uh, you definitely can see the effect. When it comes to the back of the vehicle, I did use a heavier dusting to give it more of the dusty look you'd naturally get and then used a brush to lightly agitate it into the model and kind of penetrate down into the paint a little bit to create the effect. You can kind of see here how it's progressing. Uh, it's just a slow process of slowly building on it, uh, getting that final look I'm looking for, which I'm working on here. Doing different shades of the chalk. Here's the darker brown to kind of blend it down. That'll tone down the lighter and then kind of create the natural effect here. So I also noticed on every single one of these newer Leopards, they have a uh, storage rack that sits right behind the Commander. And on the back of that, there's a large tarp on it. Now, I wanted to create that effect. So what I did is I took uh, a paper material that kind of had a little bit of a texture on it I thought that matched. And sat and played around folding it, figured out the right fold. And then uh, kind of how I was going to have it tied down look. So what I did is I kind of figured out the right look and shape. And then uh, used CA glue to glue it in place. And then I use some dowels to and weight to kind of create the look of the tie down, penetrating down and putting pressure on it. Uh, once this had all dried and was ready, and then went and painted it black and uh, finished it off by adding using styrene to create the straps that hold it down. And from there, painted it. Uh, the straps themselves say uh, NATO green off shade. Here you can see me laying the dowels down to penetrate down in to create that look and then I put a little bit of weight while it cured. After this was completed it was time to start adding all the camo netting. Now I'm using AK netting type 1 on the vehicle and I'm using a diluted 50-50 white glue with water. Uh, so what I do is I just take the uh, netting and kind of pull it apart and tease it to get it the right look. It's a very open material on the actual vehicle and then I choose different pieces to layer it to uh, finish off the effect. Here I'm just test fitting, figuring out exactly how it wants to be and then I'm going to start the actual application process here once I know it's going to work out just right. 
After I got it where I want it, I'm going to use the brush to lightly apply some white glue to uh, secure it down. Um, some places you may get a little bit of buildup of the white glue. If you put a little bit of air pressure on it or just blow on it, a lot of times you can spread that out and break up any bubbles so you won't look visible. Once this is all on and complete, I then follow up with another clear flat coat that takes the any gloss uh, effects away and really finishes off the overall look. One of the things you'll notice by looking at these on the real tanks, uh, depending on how the tank crew does it, um, some of them just take large panels and cover the whole thing, and other units will take scraps and tie them off in different places and break it up. Um, I'm kind of going with the scrap design, just taking small bits of it and laying it out. Like I said, layering it, uh, that creates kind of that rolled up and uh, jumbled up look that you'll see in it. Uh, one of the things I do do is I kind of clean it up once it dries. Sometimes you get little frayed areas that stick out. Um, it's a, uh, once again, it's a very delicate process and sometimes you have to put it down. As you can see there, a part came off um, in the testing fitting of the next part. Uh, let the stage dry and then come back and add more and then let it dry and look for uh, where the holes are, where the weak points uh, for the look you're looking for and then come back and continue to build upon the product. Once again, I really like this AK netting. I find it to be probably the best product out there for this. Um, everybody has their preference. I've tried the decal ones. I've tried the PE sheet ones. But I think that this one gives the, the most realist effect. And it's also a very affordable project to use. So I noticed on the back of the tank they have this uh, little storage rack. That's where they hold the extra ammunition. Well, what I decided to do is do a, a kind of simulate the bungee cord look. I've seen some of them. Uh, some of them have straps and some of them have like a net. And then others have almost looks like bungee cords just kind of snugged in there. And so I'm going with that look. I'm using uh, soldering wire and of making it too long so i'll cut it after it dries and securing it with ca glue once i get the uh, pattern down and everything's dried i'm going to come back and paint them to match the look that i'd seen in several pictures so here i'm working on the other direction kind of the same process of laying it out um, once it's dried and secured, uh, like I said, I'll come back and paint it, trim all the edges and make it look nice. Um, unfortunately, as you can see here, I did drop a piece on the way over, so I had to what? sand it smooth and then start the process of repainting it in the right pattern, weather a little bit and detail it. Once you see the finished model, I did a pretty good job of covering it up in the mistake. Uh, it's always something in the process, but that's kind of the fun of the project. So here's the finalized product. Um, I did do a second layer of the AK netting. Uh, I think that gave it a little more depth. You can see the uh, bungee cords up here for the ammunition that's been spent to store when they're in training. I added some chains to the smoke launchers, the 3D resin parts I uh, created, I've been adding. Um, you can see how the weathering turned out, the dust effect on the bottom. Uh, you can see some uh, markings here on the side for training. Uh, overall, an outstanding model to build. I find it uh, very enjoyable. It's a fun model to build. Uh, if you want to take it to the next level I did here, you can, or right out of the box, you'd be very happy with the results. Uh, no major issues to address. Uh, I think they did an outstanding job. Anyway, that's it. Any questions or comments, always welcome. If you have a curious question, you can get me on Facebook. You can get me in the text of this video. Try and get back to everybody as soon as possible. If you're interested in these resin parts, you can get them at Mad Model Bow. I'll attach the link in the text. Happy modeling, everybody. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.